we have a great message coming now from Pastor Rod Page. Okay. Used to be a local <laughs> pastor here, but uh, he's since, since gone to Reading, which is not that far from being local. To, That's right. That's but right. Uh, <laughs> still around close. Still close. He's got a great message for you today, and uh, I know you'll enjoy it. So, yeah. so oh, thank you. So thank you. You're welcome. 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 You're welcome. Okay, so we're live and uh, in person, right? We are we are in person, okay, but so not live. <laughs> so let's ask. So if you them. if you need us to cut and edit, oh, you got okay. that right. Okay, great. <laughs> so well, let's ask the Lord to bless our time yeah. and uh, make yeah. his his, uh, his word clear to us, right? Holy yeah. Spirit makes yes. things clear. Amen. So Lord, thank you that you have given us um, your Holy Spirit. You've given us um, the living Word, the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who said, I am the way and the truth and the life. And you've given us a, a written copy of, of your manual mm -hmm. in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And thank you for the new covenant, Lord. We have a, a new covenant based on better promises. Yeah. Lord, we don't have to worry about um, the minutia of the law and trying to earn anything. Lord, we simply by faith come. We turn away from our old life. We come to Christ and we receive by faith the free. The free gift of life. So, Lord, thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. So, we want to just talk today about one thing. And that one thing is on the title of this little book that was one of the textbooks we used when we went to Africa. And that is the word one. Yeah. That's the word one. And we're going to come back to one, hopefully, at the end of, the time, of our time today. But go back in your minds to the very end of the book of Acts. And this is a part of Acts that people don't even read, they don't even think about. But Paul is almost all done with his life. And he rented a house. He rented a house. And it says in the last couple of verses of the end of Acts that he rented a house and welcomed people into his house. Yes. And then taught about Jesus Christ to whoever would come and they had home fellowship in yes. that house. Yes. And if you think about it, what you're doing here today is kind of home fellowship. It is, yeah. You know, remember at the beginning of Acts, there were 5,000 people that got saved, a big, huge crowd, <laughs> a big splash, right? Got everybody's attention. But everyday life was in house-to-house -house ministry. That's right. And you know, it's so nice to be in a house. It's warm. It's cozy. You can be transparent. You can be honest. You can bounce things off of each other you can be one body in a house. Mm -hmm. When you're in a big, huge building, there's all kinds of little ones. <laughs> like here's a group of the older people and the young people, they hang together, and the middle-aged people hang together, and people with different uh, ideas hang together, right? We've got Baptists on one hand, and Lutherans on the other, <laughs> and Pentecostals <laughs> over here, <laughs> and others over here, and some people who won't talk to anybody, because right. they have all the answers, <laughs> or at least think they do. Mm. That's right. And yet in John 17, <laughs> Jesus prayed for one thing, yes, that we would be one. That's right. One, one, one. And I brought this little uh, little tool with me to Africa, and I gave one away, so I had to buy another one. <laughs> um, this is a little solar lamp that works great when there's no power. Wow. And so you just click it to turn it on, and it's Whoa. nice and bright. You don't want to look into it because it's really bright, but it's white light. But guess what white light is made of? White light is made of three lights. R, G, B. Red, green, blue. Together, the three make one, and you have white light. <laughs> wow. Isn't that cool? Yeah. And this is a really cool light, especially with young people, because you can double click it and get these lights to start <laughs> showing up. <laughs> and if you run out of juice, you just put it out in the sun, and it has a solar panel. So you don't rely on anything That's except cool. for the S-O-N. Yeah. Yeah. The sun of righteousness yeah. rises at the end of Malachi, right? Yes. So who is the light of the world? Jesus Christ. Jesus. Who made the sun and who is the sun? Jesus yes. Christ. It yeah. all goes back to one. All things are going to be summed up in one, Jesus Christ. Amen. Ephesians 2 says, he is all in all. All things will be wrapped up into one, into Christ. That's right. And how many bodies do we have on the planet that are belonging to him? How many bodies? One. One body. That's right. Not 10 bodies, not 50,000 bodies. <laughs> when we first started uh, working with this ministry, a dear brother found that there were 38,000 different groups called Christian oh. in the world. Wow. Since then, it has grown to 51,000 different 
S-E-C-T-S, sex. Different groups, and they don't many times talk with each other. In fact, sometimes they're mad at each other, and they don't even like each other. That's not right. Let alone get to one, they can't even stand each other. Right. And they don't sit each other very well either. <laughs> so this morning, or this afternoon, I want to do two things. I want to remind you of what you know and retell what you might not have heard. Let me say that one more time. I want to remind you of what you know and retell what you might not have heard. So we're just going to quickly go through one of my favorite books in a, in a flyby, like from way above the earth. We're going to look at Romans 1 to 8 and then Romans 9 to 16. And just very quickly, I want to just go to the end of the first half of Romans, which is Romans 8 and verse 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. Because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you, singular, free. Yeah. So we got those and you in one sentence, individual members and one body, no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. Wow! Amen! Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen! That's grace, right? Yeah. Sins washed away. The, the grace rain has come down and washed our sins away. Amen. For what the law could not do since it was weakened in the flesh. That's the old history, yeah. Right? Yeah, right? They couldn't do it. It didn't work. Jesus did in his own flesh. God did by sending his own son, Jesus Christ. Now verse 6 says this, The mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the spirit is life and peace. Yes. Wow, peace. He's, getting the, he's setting the stage in Romans 8 for the whole rest of the book. So if you look at Romans this way, when you're studying it on your own, highly recommend it. Yeah. Look at the gospel of grace, 1 to 8. And the gospel of peace, 9 to 16. Hmm. That's, good. That's the part you don't hear much, is that second part. We all know about the gospel of grace. Otherwise, we wouldn't have all these names here. We wouldn't have the cross. Mm -hmm. The cross is what brings the grace to us, right? His suffering, his, his payment for our sin. <clears throat> it's the gospel of grace, 1 to 8. And just quickly, fly by. Mm -hmm. Chapter 1 is, sin is bad in the pagan world. Chapter 2 of Romans, sin is bad in the religious world. Religious do-gooders are sinners. Yeah. Right? Right. Many people say, yeah, I'm a Christian, but they're just actually in name only. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're hypocrites. That's what the Bible calls hypocrites. That's chapter 2 of Romans. Mm -hmm. Chapter 1 is, yeah, the pagan world is definitely sinful, and it's getting worse. Yeah. That's, that's the problem, not California or the United <laughs> right, States right. or the world. Amen. It's sin has entered in and people like their sin and didn't yeah. and repel the light. That's, right. that's chapter one, and it's nasty. Yeah. It's that's nasty. Right. That's right. Go to prison work and do Christian prison work if you don't know what nasty is. It's nasty. <laughs> sin is ugly. But sin is also ugly when there's spiritual pride, chapter two. Right. Yeah. Right. People who know to do right and don't do it, and they're sneaky about it. Amen. That's yeah. chapter 2. Oh. So chapter 3 just says this. All are under sin, and there's no exit right. out of the <laughs> sin world yeah. except through Jesus. Woo, yeah. what re way. realizing we are sinners. That's the idea. I have to realize I'm a sinner, chapter 3. Yeah. Chapter 4 is, hey, don't go back to works, as works is a failure at the beginning anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. Faith is the key, chapter 4. Faith is the key. Mm -hmm. Chapter 5 starts getting better. Access and peace comes through the grace in Jesus Christ. Yeah. The full answer of the gospel is, is started to come out in chapter 5. And then, of course, our minds can get tweaked a little bit and say, well, I'm under grace, so it doesn't matter how I live. No, uh, uh, chapter uh, 6 uh, says, right, right. should we sin more and increase grace? No, oh, may it never be. No, grace means I want to serve Him even more. I want to thank Him Amen. with my life. My, my proclamation is... My body, my attitude, my heart attitude, my, my perspective on life is I want to pass on this grace. I don't want to hinder people by sitting right. or get a bad conscience. No. Mm -hmm. Chapter 7. In Christ's death, which we've been baptized into, now we are free to serve in the newness of the Spirit. Amen. Wow. Amen. Now I can have a purpose in my life. Chapter 7. Even though I'm struggling with that whole sin thing because I'm still stuck in this body for a little while. Right. 
but I could start to serve in the newness of the Spirit. Yeah, so yeah, many yeah. people, even some of my best friends, yeah. say, oh, well, the Spirit isn't for this day. But oh. when they get into their real life, they can't do anything unless they have the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> right. yeah. So they may say one thing, but they end up doing another. If they want to serve Him, they actually have to walk in the Spirit. Amen. And then there's freedom. There's joy, there's uh, provision, there's good things, there's understanding, revelation. The Holy Spirit is so key. Yes. Pastor, Amen. Have you seen that little joke that says, uh, the guy mm -hmm. asks about uh, whether or not we need Holy Spirit in our day-to-day -day life, and no. someone says to him, bro, brother, you need Holy Spirit to go into Walmart. Amen, I've seen that. <laughs> I've seen it on Facebook. Amen. <laughs> Especially in Walmart. Especially. <laughs> Yes, because yoga pants don't lie. Amen. 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 Children in yoga pants, they don't lie. Watch out in Walmart. Well, you know what? You get down to the end of seven and you're like, what could be more? And an eight is like this flood of grace. No condemnation. And even though the creation is groaning, soon the, the creation is going to be set free. There's going to be a new heaven, a new made heaven, new made earth. Mm. And eight is glory. Yeah. And then you're at the end of, end of the chapter. Let me just read a couple of things from that wonderful uh, ending. I mean, it's like, wow, Lord. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There, he shall give us all things freely. He shall yeah. give us all things freely. <gasps> Wow, and I'm, I'm justified, and I'm, I'm even glorified in a yeah. sense. I'm seated in the heavenly places. Yeah. What more could we say? Why not just finish it at eight? <laughs> That's the gospel of grace complete. Close the book. It's over. <sighs> but no, there's chapter nine. And chapter nine has tweaked so many people. Yeah. <laughs> but chapter nine is just saying simply this. Hey, guess what? Jewish Christians... It's not just for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's for the whole world. In fact, most of the Jewish people didn't even believe. That's right. Thank goodness there was a Peter yeah. and a James yeah. and a John mm -hmm. and the tax collectors mm -hmm. and the woman at the well. Mm -hmm. Remember the woman at the well? That messed people up. Well, How in the world can Samaritans be included? Right. Yeah. So Paul goes right at this idea of one body in chapter mm -hmm. 9 by saying, I will call, here's a quote, not my people, mm. my people. That's verse 25, quoted from the Old Testament promise that God was going to bring in all the nations, not just the Jewish nation. That's right. yep. And she who is unloved is going to be now called beloved. That's right. Beloved. Beloved. Mm -hmm. It's a she. Notice it's a she. Mm -hmm. The body of Christ is a bride. That's right. A yeah. sheep. Yeah. That's right. And it will be in this place where they are told, you are not my people. There they will be called sons of the living God. Yeah. Wow, Amen. so there's one body. Yeah. So now there's no male and female. There's one right. with all the rights and joys and privilege and place. Right. Wow, no slaves or free. Mm -hmm. We're one. No Jews, no Gentiles. <laughs> Chapter 9 makes this big break towards peace. Mm -hmm. Why? Because there was such hostility and anger right. between the Jews and the Gentiles. They hated each other. They tried to kill each other. Mm. In fact, it's been going on forever. Yep. Right? Ishmael and Isaac. Right. That's yeah. it. I mean, right. that all the way. But even it went back beyond that. It went back to Adam. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Oh, no, it's not me. It's that woman you gave me. <laughs> <laughs> and then the two boys started fighting. And pretty yeah. soon, Cain's killing his brother. Right. Division. Not oneness. Right. Division. Right. Wow. What? Without Christ. We don't hear this. What we hear is, hey, come to my church. I have all the answers over here. Huh. <gasps> Guilty. <laughs> <laughs> thought it. Thought it. Mm. Yeah. Didn't always dare to say it, but I thought it. Mm. If you come here, we'll have unity because we have all the answers in this building. Oh, boy. <gasps> Spiritual pride, chapter 2 of Romans. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Jews and Gentiles are now one. They're all offered the gospel. Woo! Chapter 10 says, keep being saved. Hmm. Chapter 10 says, the word is near you, even in your mouth. Oh, Lord yeah. Jesus Christ is Lord in your yes. heart, in your yes. mouth. Yeah. Speak it out. Keep confessing Christ. That's how you get to oneness. Mm -hmm. 11, don't get cocky, stay humble. Whoa, what do you mean get cocky? 
The message is clear, Romans 10, Romans 11. Now, if some, now this is Romans 11, in case you're watching and you want to look it up. Romans 11, verse 17 says, Now, if some of the branches were broken off, and you, though a wild olive branch, were grafted in among you, and have come to share in the rich root, now there's only one root, That's right. of the cultivated olive tree, there's only one tree, mm -hmm. do not boast that you are better than those branches. <laughs> right. Come on. <gasps> Don't get cocky. That's right. Don't boast. You do not sustain the root but the root sustains you the root yeah. is Christ yeah. the root of David right yeah. there's one Amen. one one yeah. one yes. then you will say branches are broken off so that I might be grafted in oh wait a minute verse 20 true enough they were broken off why because of unbelief uh oh yeah let me ask you this do you believe in the gospel of grace yes both yes. hands yes. do you believe in the gospel of peace yes where we start to move out of our comfort zone mm. and put our arms around other brothers and sisters who we may have thought, oh, they don't have all the right answers like I do. Right. And maybe they don't. Who knows? Someday we'll have all the answers. When we're yes. in heaven, we'll have all the right answers, and we'll probably find out some of our answers weren't exactly perfect. Yeah. Right. And we'll have to be humble even there. Mm -hmm. And Jesus will <laughs> say, no, don't cry about it. I'll wipe that tear away. <laughs> <laughs> True enough, they were broken off because of unbelief, but you stand by faith. Yes. Who's the you? The whole one body. The ecclesia. Oh, that's the second word in this book, ecclesia, because you see there was a, oh, there was a sneaky conspiracy. That's right. Boy, 1611, they wanted to come up with a Bible. King James says, listen, I'm going to give you very strict orders. Do not translate ecclesia as congregation like that it's terrible william tyndale you must put church because church means building building really means cathedral and in a cathedral we control the people and they aren't free and we get to tell them what the bible really says mm. whoa what mm. a sneaky conspiracy yeah. to put a german word kirche in the english church which means I control the building. I control how the Bible is interpreted. Mm -hmm. <gasps> what? Yeah. We've been living something that doesn't even exist. Mm -hmm. The building is you stones, you priests, mm -hmm. you kings, right. you saints of the living God. That is the building. There is no right. building anymore. The temple, remember, remember what happened in Israel? They have that temple full of the Holy Spirit, and one day the Spirit says, Ichabod, I'm out of here. Ugh. I'm out, I'm gone. Temple's empty. Ooh. That temple was empty. Yeah. And in 70 AD, bye-bye temple. Mm -hmm. yeah. Destroyed. Right. It's destroyed. Who is the temple of the Holy Spirit, according to 1 Corinthians? We are. <laughs> we are the body, the one, one, one body. That's right. Mm -hmm. And we've been grafted in. So he says this, Therefore consider God's kindness and severity. Severity toward those who have fallen, but God's kindness towards you. Mm -hmm. <gasps> oh, how can you be kind to those Gentiles, God? Mm -hmm. They're so wicked. And God says, no, you are the wicked ones. You put the Son of God to death. You murdered him. Yeah. Your salvation. And I'm going to make you jealous mm -hmm. by those nations. And then in the end, all... Israel will be saved. That's the promise that comes out of 9, 10, and 11. So why not close Romans now? We got all that out of the way. Oh, because we'd missed the good part in chapter 12. How about verse 3? Because all of you know 1 and 2. Be not conformed to the world. You know, Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What is the renewing of the mind that he's talking about? Look at verse 3. Instead, think sensibly as God has distributed a measure of faith to each one. A measure of faith. Yes, brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit lives in every believer. Producing faith. Yes. Supplying energy, supplying power, <laughs> supplying the light. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. And every single candle is needed in the body. Mm -hmm. Yes, now as we have many parts, verse 4, in one body, and all the parts do not have the same function. In the same way, we who are many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Right. Yes. 
So I'm an individual and I matter, and I also matter because I'm part of the one body, which is the huge body of Christ Amen. throughout the ages. I'm part of something so big. Yeah. A worldwide enterprise, the kingdom, the household, the body, the family, mm -hmm. all those things that we talked about for years right. come into view when you have the proper definition of ecclesia. Now let's just yeah. talk about ecclesia, a Greek word that all the people knew in those days when Jesus said it. Mm -hmm. Because they knew that the Greeks invented what? Democracy. Mm. In democracy, every person had a vote. Mm -hmm. No one dominated. <clears throat> everybody came together. Everybody got to put their two cents in. At the end of the day, if it was 51 to 50, the 51 won, and the whole group said, okay, mm -hmm. we're doing that. We're doing what they said. And we all got to say our piece. And no one dominated. No one told me how to vote. I had total freedom. That's the ecclesia. Is when the democracy comes together and gathers together, the meeting is called ecclesia. And everybody knew it. Mm -hmm. Jesus could have used all kinds of words like synagogue, temple. He said, I will build my ecclesia and the gates of hell will not prevail. That's right. That's right. That's right. When we come together and every member, every member, I mean, how many Billy Grahams can we have in the world? <laughs> One. That's right. How many Greg Lorries? One. Yeah. How many Apostle Pauls? One. Yeah. Right. How many Sharons or Scotts or Terry Sues? Or, there's just one of us. That's right. Because we, he needs all of us. He needs all of us right. individually and together. Praise the Lord. This is something that Jesus Christ mm -hmm. gave us and we have forgotten it. So we're retelling it to ourselves. We're preaching the gospel of peace to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Verse 15. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep, weep with those who weep. Yes. <gasps> oh Lord. I don't feel like rejoicing. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. somebody's being blessed somewhere. Rejoice for them. Right. Yeah. Tomorrow will be your day. Maybe yeah. tonight will be your night. Mm. Oh, I'm weeping. Yeah, somebody needs to come alongside and weep with you because there are things worth weeping over in this That's world. Right. That's right. Oh, Lord, help me to weep with those who weep. Mm. With the mother standing in the middle of the road in Nigeria with her husband who has polio and two arms who can mm. do no work. Mm. And she's holding her baby and showing everybody, look, I have a baby to feed. Would you help me? Would you give me a few pennies so I can buy milk? Mm. Oh, you're weeping. They're weeping. For those who've heard the gospel so many times in America, but it's a twisted gospel. It's not the gospel of grace. It's a gospel of Jesus plus mm -hmm. works. Jesus plus this or the other thing. Mm -hmm. Weep. Paul said, I, I'm weeping over my Jewish... I would be, like to be cut off myself if I could trade places so that my Jewish friends can know Christ. Yeah. Right. It's so good to know Christ. Do not repay anyone for evil, verse 17. Give careful thought to do what is honorable in everyone's eyes, if possible, as far as on you, live at peace with everyone. Friends, don't avenge yourselves. Instead, leave room for God's wrath, and because it is written, vengeance belongs to me. I will repay, says the Lord. Yeah. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. Mm -hmm. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink, for in so doing, he'll be heaping fiery coals on his head. Yes. Have you ever noticed, believer, that Sometimes when you're walking in sin, God actually blesses you and makes you so ashamed you repent of it. <laughs> That's called the goodness of God leads to repentance. Amen. Amen. One spirit, brother. One spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one, one Holy Spirit. Amen. Didn't God see us when we were hungry and feed us? Yes, he did. Didn't he see our thirstiness and give us something to drink? Oh, God does what he tells us to do. Chapter 13, verse 8, Do not owe anyone anything except to love one another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. This blows all the commandments out because you don't have to worry about committing adultery if you're loving because you're not going to steal something that's not yours. Right. It is. You're not going to take somebody's life but it's not yours if you love them. Pretty hard to be mad at people when you're praying for them and mm -hmm. wanting them to be saved and enjoy Jesus like you are. Yeah. Right. Oh, Lord. Verse 14, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its mm. desires. This leads to peace. This leads to one body. 
chapter 14. Specifically, love the weaker brother. Boy, this is a hard one in Christianity. Yeah. We want to throw the weaker brother under the bus. Man, you're so weak. Why didn't you even show up? Right. Really? They're the ones who need to show up. They need to be encouraged. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Man, you're wrestling with that conscience. You're on the way. Who's the way? Jesus is the way. You're on the way. You're struggling with it. You'll work it out. You'll grow up. We'll be here to help. You're alive, and we'll be here to hold you up. <laughs> Amen. Amen. One person judges one day to be more, verse 5, important than another. Someone else judges every day to do the same. Right. Let everyone be fully convinced in his own mind. See, there's the democracy at work in the yes. Ecclesia. Whoever observes the day, observes it for the honor of the Lord. Whoever eats, eats for the Lord, since he gives thanks to God. And whatever, he, wh whoever does not eat, it is for the Lord that he does not eat it. And he gives thanks to God, for none of us lives for himself, and no one dies for himself. Mm. Boy. When I was in Nigeria, we had a meeting with a very, very honored leader who has thousands and thousands of Nigerian Christians under his care, uh, under his mission board. He's, he has missionaries in 19 different countries throughout the world. Yeah. And he wanted to hear, what in the world are these Americans talking about? He was on day 39 of a 40-day fast. Oh, my goodness. But he looked like a million bucks. He was dressed nice, his hair was nice. And then he said, I said, why aren't you eating with us? He goes, oh, I'm sorry, brother. We're finishing our 40-day fast tomorrow and then I'll be able to eat. Mm. Now, if I would have been offended and said, man, you know, you think you're better than me? More holy because you're on this 39? I've never done a 39-day fast. Three is about as much as I can handle. <laughs> Praise the Lord, it encouraged me. Man, here's a guy who loves the Lord. He wants to give up everything except for the word. Jesus right. Christ. Centering his mind on Christ alone. Yes. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Honor where honor is due. Brings peace to the assembly, the congregation, the gathering, mm -hmm. the ecclesia. Therefore, whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Amen. Realize, brothers and sisters, that our brothers and sisters are dying throughout the world for the cause of Christ. Yeah. Yes. Great film, I highly recommend it, called The Insanity of God. Hmm. About a Baptist missionary who went around the world and stopped everything he was doing to start interviewing Christians who were suffering for the cause of Christ. Wow. In fact, he got into countries where they had to start hiding his identity on the film because he would be in trouble because now he was in danger because he was interviewing people who were dangerous hmm. yeah. in foreign countries who were being persecuted, hmm. thrown in dungeons. Their wives yeah. hurt. Yeah. Yeah. If we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die. For, you know, there's, a, there's, a, there's an idea in Christianity mm. that if you suffer, then there must be something wrong with you. That's a lie. Wow. <laughs> wow. We need to get back to the purity and simplicity right. of Christ right. who died for us. And of course, if we die, if we, if we like Jesus, go into the ground, we're going to be raised up. There's That's going to right. be a, a multiplication, right. right? There's going to be a harvest. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord, let us be your doormat if we need to be. Right. A stepping stone for others yeah. if we need to be. Verse 10, you, why do you judge your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment yes. seat of God. Amen. Wow. Wow. That leads to 15. Verse 7. Therefore, welcome one another, just as Christ also welcomed you to the glory of God. Mm. Oh, Lord. Mm. Oh, Lord. What if they're Gentiles? And I'm Jewish. <laughs> which I'm not. I'm going to welcome them. What if their skin is the wrong color? I'm welcoming them. That's right. What if they're not part of my denomination or my affiliation or my right. group? I'm welcoming them. Wow. Wow. Romans 16 looks like the credits at the end of a movie. <laughs> All kinds of names, yeah. all kinds of people, yep. 
Yeah. And Paul's not saying, say hello to so-and-so. What he's saying is, you go greet all these Christians. Yes. Because every one of them is important. Yes. You get down to the end of 16, and there's quite a warning. Oh, yeah. If there are those who bring division, have nothing to do with them. Right. Because peace is where it's at. That's right. One body is where it's at. You can do all kinds of things, but if you bring division to the body, you're hurting the body, you're destroying the body, God is going to bring you into a bad place. He's going to, he's going to deal with you. One little phrase in 16, Paul says this, greet Gaius. Mm -hmm. and Gaius was the host of the home fellowship mm -hmm. where Paul was in Rome. That brings us full circle back to the end of the book of Acts. All of us can either be a host like Gaius, or we can leave our home and go to other Christians and have fellowship with them. Right. It could be in the Starbucks coffee shop. That's right. It could be in our own house. Mm -hmm. It could be on a sidewalk. It could be anywhere. Right. I got off the plane in Nigeria, and we had to go through all these different stations at the airport and be interrogated. <laughs> why are you here, and why should we give you a visa? Yeah. And we started just sharing from our heart about what was God, God was doing in Nigeria. And you know what we found? These guys melted like putty. And we found out that many of the people, the officials, were actually believers in Jesus Christ. Mm. And all of a sudden we were having fellowship instead of an <laughs> argument <laughs> right, there, right there in the airport before we even started right. the mission trip. That's right. That that right. We had a mission trip in the airport. <laughs> with the guys hauling the luggage, we had fellowship. With the guy tending the pool... At a motel, one of the mo motels, I think I got sick in that pool, but oh. I went swimming anyway, even though it didn't look very nice. They had a pool attendant, I had fellowship with him. Mm. The, the gate attendant, we had fellowship with him. A businessman, I had fellowship with him. Wherever we went, we had fellowship with the saints. Mm. Here's some things to think about this whole idea of ecclesia and oneness. You need some kind of house, some kind of place to gather. Maybe it's a tent. That's okay. Oh, I don't have a fancy house. That's even better because you know what? When you have a small house, it's cozy. Yeah. <laughs> Number two, a meal breaks down so many bar yeah. barriers. Did you notice Jesus ate with sinners? Yes. Right. And he got castigated for it, right? That's right? He got in trouble for it. Food takes walls down. Believers from different factions are represented. It's better to have more diversity because you're challenged and you look at verses and you think, man, I never looked at that verse. Oh, it was kind of scary in my world, but I need to think of all of Scripture. Right. And some of your neighbors have a different idea on things and iron sharpens iron. Approved or genuine ones are needed. You know what an approved one? 1 Corinthians 11 says, those who are approved are the ones who see the whole picture of the whole ecclesia. Mm -hmm. Picture it like a rim on a bicycle. The hub is Jesus Christ. The spokes are individuals and ministries, but without the rim that holds us together, the new wineskin, we're all over the map. We're crashing into the ditch. The ecclesia is the rim. It holds us together. There's one body, one ecclesia. The Lord's Supper with bread and cup Help us to remember it's Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Yes. The ecclesia is where everyone is equally appreciated and accepted and honored. Love for one another, 1 Corinthians 13. Mm. <laughs> everyone contributes by prophesying, 1 Corinthians 14. That's right. <clears throat> no one dominates, 1 Corinthians 14, 30. Number 10. Unbelievers and even novices are present, and some become believers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because the word is given in prophecy, mm -hmm. chapter 14. Some practical things. If you want to learn more about the gospel of peace, I have a business card. I'll give you that. You can look up some free videos. I did bring some books with me, and uh, if somebody wants to uh, buy some of our books, we have some, a few of them, not many. We have some booklets, which are much cheaper. 
This used to be one big fat book called One, and it was broken up into three books because it was just too big. That's what I heard. Yeah. This is now being used or is getting ready to be used at a seminary in West Africa. Oh, mm -hmm. And the master's degree program in ecclesiology, you ever heard of that ecclesiology? Yeah. It comes yeah. from Ecclesia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's going to be offered a master's degree program Wow. at the West African Theological Seminary where we, where we ended our trip um, awesome. in October. Now there's a price we pay for this. Some people will say, oh, you're trying to tear the churches down. Oh, no. <laughs> churches and ministries are needed. In fact, if there's bigger ecclesia, we need more pastors, more teachers. Come on. Right. Because there'll be more people coming to Christ that will need to right. instruct the babes in the basics of God's Word. Yes. Amen. We need every gift, pastors included. All the gifts need to be there. Faith, miracles, administration helps. There's a place for every believer in the one ecclesia. Amen. Amen. That's things we need to be retold because we have not always heard these things. We've always heard, yes, the gospel of grace, but then I'm going off to my church, I'm going off to my little hut over here, and we'll never talk to each other. Mm. All right. <clears throat> And we are called in John 17 to be one. Why? So the world may know. That's right. Amen. So the world may believe that he was sent by God and he loved us where we were. Right. Lord, thank you for your word. Mm. The living word. The truth. Jesus Christ is the way and the truth and the life. Mm. If we mm. have him, if we truly have him and abide in his love, Lord, there will be fruit that remains. Yes. That's what we want. We want to have fruit that remains. Fruit that lasts into eternity past this short little <laughs> um, thing we call time. So Lord, keep us humble. Keep us loving. Keep us in the one ecclesia. Mm -hmm. The gathering of God's people. Lord, help us to, to begin to gather um, spontaneously mm -hmm. not just on a certain day but throughout the week yes mm -hmm. and if we can't gather physically Lord help us to reach out by the phone and and text each other and mm -hmm. encourage each other Lord we need to spread encouragement into the body of Christ now because many are discouraged Amen. many are separated <laughs> isolated mm -hmm. and we need to be brought together mm -hmm. so we thank you for this time for the privilege of sharing your gospel, the complete gospel of grace and peace. Lord, help us not to leave any part out. Yes. To preach the whole counsel of God and to see people brought into the fellowship for grace needs to be extended to more and more people. Mm. Lord, we want to see Satan's head crushed and as we are one, he is crushed. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so Great much. Word. Thank you. Thank you guys. Great word.